Alright, now that we have Xiaomi's Yamaha UI in the house, let's compare the home screen customization options we have on One UI and Yamaha UI. Of course, both the UIs have their own home app which offers different customization options and settings and they are good in their own way. But what I request you guys to do is share your thoughts about this comparison and let me know which one according to you is better and which additional features you would like to see in both these custom skins. Leave a comment. Now it's time to get started. On the left hand side I have got Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra which is running on One UI 3.1. This is the Exynos variant I have here and this is on 120Hz refresh rate. On the right hand side I have got Xiaomi Mi 11X Pro which is running on Yamaha UI 12.5 and this one has Snapdragon 888 running on 120Hz display as well. Alright now let's press and hold on the home screen to turn the settings menu on. As you can see, there is a slight delay on Yamaha UI to activate the settings menu. Here at the bottom, we have got four options on One UI. We have got wallpapers, themes, widgets, and settings. Whereas on Yamaha UI, we have got wallpaper, widgets, and settings. When we tap on wallpaper on Yamaha UI, it will open its theming app. So we have got themes which can be reached through wallpapers option. Let's go back. Now here again, I'm going to press and hold the home screen just to see what happens. As you can see on One UI we can shuffle the home screen from left to right. Whereas on Yamaha UI we don't get that option when we tap and hold but we have got that option here. Let me just show you that. Let's select one of the applications here. I'll just tap on this. As you can see at the bottom this particular window pops up where you can just hold a particular home screen and move it around here. As you can see I can drag it and shuffle them however I want. So this is the way we do it on Yamaha UI. And uh, when I enable this particular option, we can also see on the top, we have got group, remove and done option on Yamaha UI. You can just select the applications here to group them together or to remove them right from here. And then you can just tap on done. Whereas on One UI, we don't get such options over here. You can anyways carry out these functions on the home screen itself. Now let me just deselect these apps on Yamaha UI. Let's tap on widgets. This is how the widgets are showing up on One UI and Yamaha UI. Of course this may change when we get Android 12 on both these devices. I will perhaps do another comparison when we have Android 12 on both of them. Now when it comes to widgets, we can just scroll horizontally on One UI to select a particular widget. Whereas on Yamaha UI we have to scroll downwards or upwards. Now to add widget, what we do on One UI is just tap on that particular widget and we get an option to add here. But when we press and hold on it, we don't get any options over there. Whereas on Yamaha UI, you can just press and hold on a particular widget and drop it on the home screen. But as you can see, all the layout associated with one particular widget is grouped on One UI, which you can just tap and select them and add them on the home screen. Whereas on Yamaha UI, it's all scattered. We've got all the layouts of a particular widget shown separately. Actually, this is also kind of useful on Yamaha UI. We can actually see all the layouts associated with a particular widget separately and we can just tap and hold on it and bring them to the home screen. So that's how we add widgets on the home screen on these two custom skins. Now, the most important part, the settings. Let's tap on settings on both these UIs. As you can see on one UI, we have got home screen layout, home screen grid, app screen grid, and then we have got options like show app screen button on home screen, lock home screen layout, add new app to home screen, hide apps, app icon badges, swipe down for notification panel, rotate to landscape mode. So these are the options that we get on One UI Home and that is all we get on One UI Home. Now, as you can see here, this particular window on uh, Yamaha UI shows very few options, uh, but we do have transition effects here. When I tap on transition effects, we've got four different types of transitions here. You can customize the way you want here. These are kind of cool to use on 120Hz display. And then we have got set default screen. We can select a particular home screen to set it as default. But when it comes to home screen layout, Yamaha UI lags behind. As you can see, we just have 4x6 and 5x6 layout. Whereas on One UI, we have got 4x5, 4x6, 5x5, 5x6. And if you use Home Up module on Good Lock, we can also set 6x7 layout. But we are not going to consider that in this video because Good Lock has got its own limitations. Uh, it is not available in all the regions and it is available only on some specific devices. So we are not going to consider Good Lock customizations in this video.
All right, now back to MIUI Home, we have got fill cells of uninstalled apps. This is a cool option we have here. What this does is, whenever you uninstall a particular app on the home screen, the available app next to it will fill that space, thereby keeping the home screen uncluttered. If you disable this feature, when you uninstall an application, that particular cell will remain empty and we will have to manually move the other applications in that particular place. So definitely this is a cool addition on MIUI. Then we have got lock home screen layout here. Now comes more interesting part. I'll tap on this more option on MIUI. As you can see, we have got some more options over here in this menu. We have got an all new menu, which is opened over here. On the top, we have got default launcher application. We can directly select a particular launcher, which you have installed on the phone right from here. Whereas on One UI, we have to separately go to the settings, then go to applications. That is where we are going to select the default launcher. Whereas on MIUI, we have got this option on home screen setting itself. Then we have got this option home screen. When I tap on this, you can see we have got a classic option here and we have got with app drawer option here. This is also available on One UI. We've got some more customization options at the bottom here. We have got app suggestions. We can manage the app categories as well. As you can see, when I tap on this, we can reset, shuffle, or move these categories around. This customization will be applied on the app drawer. In the app drawer, we can slide towards your right to see all the grouped application. We have got communication, entertainment, photography, tools, news and reading, shopping, finance, business, lifestyle. These are the options we get, and this can also be customizable. We can remove the category or add the category or shuffle these categories the way you want. Then we have got background option over here. When we tap on this, we have got light, dark or auto background for the app drawer. And look at this, this is amazing. We have got app drawer background transparency. We can set the transparency of the app drawer background by 25%, 50%, 75% or 100%. Cool, isn't it? Now let's go back. We've got scroll bar customization also. We can either select original layout or we can select alphabetical order. Then we have got this option, place new apps on home screen, which is also available on One UI. Let's go back now. We have got system navigation option also here. When we tap on this, we have got buttons or gesture options here. It makes sense to put the settings in the home screen setting itself. Unlike One UI, where we have to go to the settings, then go to display, and that's where we are going to find navigation bar. So which one makes sense to you? Putting navigation bar in display settings or in the home screen settings itself? Let me know in the comment section below. All right, now when we scroll down here, we have got some gesture demos as well. If you're new to Yama UI, it is gonna to help to learn the gestures here. Okay, now let's go back. I think I missed one settings here. When we tap on this, we get an option to select App Vault or Google Discover. We do have similar option on One UI. We can just press and hold on the home screen and swipe towards the left to see this option either Samsung free or we can set Google Discover depending on the device and the availability of Google Discover feature. Anyways, let's go back to Yama UI. Let's scroll down a bit. We saw system navigation already. Then we have got options, fill cells of uninstalled apps, lock home screen layout. Then comes the icon size. When I tap on this, as you can see, we have got a bar here. We can just slide on it to increase or decrease the icon sizes over here. This is again, a cool customization option we have on EMI UI. Let's go back. We've got an option here called global icon animations. When you enable this toggle, it renders animations on third party application icons also. But for some reason, I couldn't get this particular feature working on this device. All right, now let's scroll down. We have got one more customization option here, and this is for customizing the recents menu. When I tap on this, as you can see, we have got two options here. One is vertically, other one is horizontally. This is how the vertical recent screen looks. And this is how the horizontal recent screen looks. Now this particular customization feature we do have on One UI through Goodlock module, which is of course the home of module. Again, that is a separate module that you have to have on your device and that is limited to specific devices and in specific regions. So by default, we don't have this option on One UI. Then at the bottom, we also have a toggle to show memory status. Then look at this customization option. We have an option to blur app previews. When I tap on this, you can see it says select apps for which previews will be blurred in the recents. 
You can turn on the switch for particular applications here, which will be blurred in the background when you go to recent applications, provided that particular app is open in recent. And then the last option we have is show suggestions. It is going to show some suggestions of the applications when you go to recents. So these are the customization options we get on Yama UI, which is definitely brilliant. And we have got so many options here. If you are someone who love customizing your phone, especially the home screen, then you are going to fall in love with this. I'm not saying One UI is bad. One UI does offer a lot of customizations through its good lock module. But here, by default on One UI, we don't have so many options which Yamai UI offers. That is my frank opinion because looking at this menu and the options that we have here, there are so many customizations that we can do, which is just amazing. What do you think about it? You let me know which one is better or which one do you think should improve and who is the winner here. Do let me know your thoughts about it in the comment section below. Definitely both of these skins have their own advantages and disadvantages. But in this video, we are comparing only the home screen customization options. So be candid and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. That's all I have here. If you're new on the channel, make sure to subscribe and be a part of Apex community to watch some cool contents on Samsung Galaxy phones, One UI, Yamaha UI, Android applications, Galaxy watches, and anything related to technology. Thanks a lot for watching you guys. Take care and stay safe. I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye-bye.